Where's Steph? Steph, I got you something. For me? Open it. Holy moly. Get this drone in the air in 60 minutes or less. Your clock starts now. Let's go do now? it. Now? For real? Yeah. My name is Stephanie. I'm an experienced commercial helicopter pilot and an inexperienced drone pilot. Stick with us for the next 10 minutes or less. Here's how to get a new drone in the air as fast and as simply as possible. You'll know how to get your drone in the air legally and how to not crash. This video is great for anybody in Canada or the USA that just got a new drone. The rules are more or less the same between the two countries, but where there's a difference, we're going to point them out. So we're starting with the regulatory stuff. So just bear with us a moment. If you skip these steps, that's where you're gonna get into trouble. Right off the bat, in Canada, you may not even need a license or certificate to fly your drone, as long as that aircraft is under 250 grams. Any drone that weighs 249 grams or less, in Canada, we consider that a micro drone. In Canada, you don't need to register a micro drone, take a course, or pass any online drone test. You're actually good to go right out of the box. However, if you're watching this from the United States with a sub 250 gram drone, that drone doesn't need to be registered with the F FAA, but you do need to take a free online test called the Trust. Okay, so this covers the sub 250 gram drone licensing requirements, but what if the drone weighs more than this? The Trust is good enough for recreational use in the United States, but don't forget to also register your drone with the FAA and mark that registration on the drone. If you want to fly at night or fly for commercial purposes, you'll need a Part 107 certificate. If you want to get going as soon as possible, getting a basic certificate is as simple as passing an online exam and registering your drone with Transport Canada. If you need help preparing for the basic exam, our online course at Coastal Drone will get you ready with confidence. Now, there's one more thing to do with the drone to make sure you're good to go. Out of the box, you're going to need to do a few things. So, the goal is to get it flying. First, get those batteries charged. We recommend charging all of your batteries to full before doing anything else. While you're waiting for the batteries to get topped up, create your DJI account and log in on the controller. When the batteries are charged and you're logged in, power on the drone and the controller and follow the connection guide to get those connected. Okay, now we're gonna go to connect to aircraft. DJI Mini 4 Pro, that's us. Unfold the front and rear aircraft arms, like so. A little starfish, one, and two, those are hooked. Oh yeah. Yep, you got it. Oh. oh. Wow. Uh, remove the gimbal protector. I think that's this guy. Yep. Slide the battery into the battery compartment. Press and then press and hold the power button to power on the aircraft. Press and then press. Press. On the back there. This yep. one. Tappity tap. Press once and then press again. Yep. Oh. There you go. There's a very, very good chance you're going to need to update the firmware. If you need extra help on updating your firmware, we actually shot a video on how to update your firmware, and you can find that video right here. Depending on the drone, you'll need to ensure that you have good Wi-Fi, and maybe grab a small fan to keep the drone cool while doing the firmware update. DJI's smaller drones tend to overheat if you have them sitting powered on for a long time. They don't have fans. They don't have fans. Since we also don't have fans, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Once the firmware is updated, any custom settings that you may have put into the controller are going to be reset. Double check that every Everything is the way you expect it to be. Don't pull an E in and firmware update right before a critical time sensitive shoot. Want to learn more about that? Stay tuned for a video about flying FPV indoors at a major event. Finally, make sure you have a memory card in the drone that is suitable for its operation. If your controller also has a memory card slot, it's a good idea to put one in there too. This can act as a backup in case you lose the drone. Once you've got these essentials done, the drone is ready for its first flight. How do I know where I can fly it? Well, we recommend not doing your first flight indoors. You're going to have a much harder time avoiding obstacles, and these drones are really designed to be flown outside. No satellite position. And for the most part, your house is a mess, my house is a mess, it's Christmas morning, and grandma wants a break from the noise. And then, no! Some places may have restrictions on the use of drones, either by posted signs or by written bylaws in that area. Since this video is meant to cover both the US and Canada, we recommend checking local municipal websites to see if they specifically prohibit drones, remote controlled aircraft, RC, powered toys, RPAS, UAS, model aircraft, something like that in their bylaws. Or high speed projectiles. Or high speed projectiles. School fields are probably okay as long as there aren't any kids or posted signs. And of course you can always fly in your own yard as long as there's not restricted airspace above you that applies to drones. Remember, airspace applies all the way to the ground, even if it's below the height of your house. You don't necessarily own the airspace in your own yard. One of the big differences between micro drones and small drones is the airspace rules change. You'll need to check out the tools that will help you find the spot where you wanna fly. In Canada, you can use NavDrone as the official source of drone airspace. 
airspace information. We have several videos on the channel that'll walk you through Navdrone, or you can check out their site, map.navdrone.ca on your browser. This does not require a login. In the United States, you wanna use the FAA's B4 UFly service, which is available on four supported apps which are on the screen right now. When you're looking at the apps, Here's a couple things to keep in mind. There are a few places in Canada where no aircraft, including drones, can fly. Remember, use map.navdrone.ca to make sure you are not in one of these areas. They're gonna show up as restricted or CYR or as a NOTAM area. And I know at this point it's beating a dead horse, but if your drone is over 250 grams and you just have a basic certificate, you need to also make sure that you're not in controlled airspace, which is usually located around airports. Use any of the site maps that we've discussed Find these areas, and if it's red, don't go flying. These are some last minute tips before you go flying. So we're on location now, we're outside. Steph's gonna do her first flight outside. To make sure you don't get in trouble, take off away from people in a quiet area. Basically, as long as it's relatively open, fairly quiet, you'll be good to go. Most of the new drones on the market will have built-in obstacle avoidance. Drones like the Mini 4 Pro, and the older Mini 3 Pro, and most of the Mavic and Air series of drones. Some can see in all directions, which is called omnidirectional, but some can only see forwards and backwards. Be sure to check your aircraft manual and your drone specs to make sure you know what the obstacle avoidance can and can't do, and how to make sure it's working. One of the most common errors we see in new pilots is that you can actually inadvertently disable obstacle avoidance if you put the aircraft into sport mode. This will not only disable this crash avoidance, but it's also gonna make the drone fly way faster, more twitchy, more responsive. Maybe not a good idea for your first flight. You hit a tree! For your first flight, keep it in normal mode and keep the benefits of obstacle avoidance, or you can even try putting it in cine or tripod mode, and this is gonna slow everything down even further. You see how you've got that big red arc? I do. That's the obstacle that it sees in front of it. Before we go, here's a couple final tips to keep you safe on your first flight. If you take some of these things into mind, you'll have a much better chance of surviving your first flight. Avoid flying backwards and sideways. You can't see what's behind you, and I bet you're gonna be staring at the screen more than the drone. Keep your eyes on the drone and its immediate surroundings. Don't fly too far away. You need to see the drone, which is called visual line of sight. If you fly too far away, you might also lose your radio link. Not to mention crashing into something that you can't see. When you're bringing the drone back for landing, flying near people, you always wanna make sure that it's above their heads. Avoid flights over open water, especially at low level. Most drones, they have the downward facing cameras, but when they're over water, the reflection from the water is gonna mess with them and they could also just auto land. We already talked about the obstacle avoidance, but don't assume the obstacle avoidance can see everything. What happens if I hit some of these little bushes here? Uh, it'll crash. Cameras on these are very small and can't see objects that are less than a couple inches in diameter. Small branches are pretty much invisible to the drone. And finally, give yourself a little bit of the buffer on the battery. Don't take it right down to 10%. The drone might fly away, cause problems, or you might not be able to catch it with enough time. My name is Stephanie. I'm an experienced commercial helicopter pilot and an experienced drone pilot. All right, now you're ready for your first flight. And if you're anything like us, you're gonna to wanna to fly more and more. Check us out at coastaldrone.co for advanced pilot courses and a USA part 107 course. If you wanna learn more about the difference between basic and advanced operations, we've got those videos on screen right now. If you're still stuck on getting your drone in the air, or you think we missed an important drone flying tip, drop a comment below. We really enjoy replying to comments. We love them. If you're watching this video after your first flight and things didn't go well, Check out our video on what happens if you crash your drone. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next time on Coastal Drone. Bye.